Hello everybody, welcome back for some more Tekken 3. Today, let's see who we've got left. We've done Jin, Hua Rong, Law, and Paul. Um, I don't, I don't know. I mean, yeah, I could always, you know, do King. Uh, okay, fine, fuck it. We'll do, we'll do Xiao Yu finally. This is, this is my brother's main for pretty much... Technically, any and all Tekken games. I gotta watch out with this controller. It's sitting underneath my Elgato cord, and the way my cords tend to be a lot of the time is not very sturdy and very good. So maybe one day I should probably get like a new capture card at some point, but we'll see. Anyway, so Xiaoyu is a stance character, just like Hua Rong. If I'm still pronouncing that right, I'm not sure exactly. But um, anyway, so yeah, she's a stance character like him, and I, I would say... I think Lei probably is too, technically. I think. And the way that stance works should be about the same, where it's like, oh, if you do certain um, button presses, maybe it's two punch, maybe it's two kick. Yeah, I, well, that, well, that just does that, but there's a way that you can you can change into a different stance and then start activating different moves. And that right there was one of them, that little kick thing, where I kind of changed... When, when I did that kick... It flipped me around on my back, and then you could do a different move, which is pretty cool. It kind of... Stance characters are kind of interesting in the fact that they essentially have pretty much two move sets, and depending on, like, which one you're doing, uh, obviously it will give you different stuff to do. I'm so bad for this character. <laughs> but, um, another thing that's kind of fun about that, too, is the fact that you don't really need to necessarily like if you learn your stance comp if you learn your stance characters you know i've seen people who play these characters pretty well they usually just incorporate you know the different stance within a combo which is pretty neat so realistically yes they have probably potentially you know maybe an extra half of a move set or maybe even like double a move set but on top of that, they gain more stuff, and, you know, it's just neat that way, I guess. It's kind of fun to watch people who play really good. Fuck it, man. But yeah, I've noticed, um, I know this is completely off topic here, but I have noticed that people tend to enjoy my Tekken playthroughs, and I appreciate that, of course. Um, usually, if I see likes or even just a decent amount of views, I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> people like this. Which is always kind of neat to see. Because I always kind of considered myself not really a great Tekken player. I just always play for fun. I play for the casual sense. Um, that's just what I like doing. And of course, like I said, I appreciate, you know, people enjoying it as well. And, uh, yeah, I enjoy typically playing Tekken, so that kind of helps out a lot. Now... In this game, Xiaoyu does have an alternate alternate skin, which I gotta remember how to do those. And I will probably end up doing her campaign as well, which is her friend, which I always forget her name. I, re I think it's Miharu, I think, I want to say. I, which also, I believe she's in Tekken Tag. If not, maybe Tekken Tag 2, possibly. She's in one of them. Like, I'm pretty sure she's in one of them. Which would make sense if she was in Tekken Tag 1, considering the fact that, like, you know, she came from 3. So it would make sense. Because Tekken Tag 1 is, like, a good combination of pretty much just characters from, like, all three first games put together. And honestly, you know, I would like to do Tekken Tag on this channel at some point. But, of course, that depends on my mood, and we'll see, you know, future endeavors, how that all goes. There we go. Nice. All right. Pretty much over halfway. Now we just go to survive Julia, which this is going to be hard to get through. <laughs> I've also been going through um, Soul Calibur 4, actually, as well, in my off time. Because, well, I mean, well, by went through it, I mean I did like a few stories thinking that was how I unlocked characters. But yes and no. Because all things considered, you do unlock characters that way, kind of, because you get money to buy those characters. So... Yeah. And the version I'm playing on is I'm actually playing the Xbox version for it instead, because that's the one that has Yoda. And I, unfortunately, at the time, did not have Soul Calibur 4 when it was out to get uh, the PS3 version of, like, you know, 
Darth Vader, Yoda, and Starkiller all together. I uh, didn't really play a lot of Soul Calibur extensively back then either. Uh, same thing with Tekken. Um, it was more so that like I played Soul Calibur 2 a bit, and I I played you know a decent amount of Tekken 2. I'd say a decent amount of Soul Calibur 2 back in the day as well. I used to rent it like all the time, and just loved it. I rented the GameCube one, of course, because that was the one that I knew had, you know, Link, and I was like, oh, that's so cool, and then, yeah. I didn't really ever play the PS2 one until, like, way later, and then I realized, like, oh, shit, that game's got, like, hey, how'd you know? Which I heard that it was apparently supposed to be Cloud. So, I think that's cool. That that was gonna happen, but then it didn't happen. But I think he would have been a good choice. I mean, hell, Cloud wasn't a fighting game at that point, I think. Yeah, because Air Guys was on PS1 and Soul Calibur 2 was PS2. Now, would I like to do Soul Calibur? Absolutely. You know, I, I wouldn't mind doing, like, more Tekken and just Soul Calibur stuff. That'd be kind of a lot of fun. Soul Calibur 1, though? Maybe not. <laughs> we'll see. Eh, maybe. I don't know. Soul Calibur 1's a... Well, I have Soul Blade. Because I know there's Soul Calibur and there's Soul... Or is it Soul Edge? Ah, oh, fuck. I forget. I think it's named differently in... What I think it was, like, PAL. I keep doing... The same kick. I'm trying to like do inputs, like directional inputs, while I'm doing that. But I'm not hitting the directional inputs first, and so I end up just hitting just the circle button. <sighs> about had it, about had it, not had it. That's fine. It happens. Funny we gotta fight Lay here. I think we have to fight Lay here every time, don't we? It feels like we do. I should be careful with that that follow up thing. And uh. Yeah, so I have Soul Blade, which was like the PS1 one. And I think Soul Calibur was on Dreamcast, if I'm not mistaken. That's a launcher? Sick. I know that's like a small launcher. And, uh... Oop. I'll try to remember the name of those moves, but they're called Rising. Well, while Rising is what they say. I was talking to my brother about it. I'm like, oh yeah, what, I forgot what they're called. And it's like, oh yeah, it's Wall Rising. Oh, yeah. forgot we got more than, you know, eight stages in this game to go through. I always forget that. Shit. Okay, got the break. Very good. God damn it, this is going to be a tough one. Yeah, I might be wrong, but I do feel like Lei is a stance character to some extent, maybe. Which is funny because, like, I, 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 don't, I don't know why I keep forgetting that Lei was also in Tekken 2. You would think I would remember that by now. Because <laughs> I, I like playing Tekken 2, of course. To the, almost to the point where I kind of want to go through it again, just for the hell of it. It's a fun game. I like it. You know? I like my Tekken 2s. The music, the stages, all of it was so good back then. And I know I sound like a boomer when I say that, but like it genuinely was, you know, in my opinion, like a really good game. Sorry, I'm concentrating too too high here. I'm still trying to like figure out like move sets and stuff and figure out what works. But anyway, so yeah, like I said, um, I would like to do Soul Calibur, but just like with Tekken One, I prefer not to do the first game. Uh, they're too they're a little too archaic for me. And actually, th this might make some people mad, but I feel like it's the same way for Virtual Fighter for me, where I just think. I'm not a big fan of Virtual Fighter, but then again, I haven't really, you know, played them too much. So maybe they get... They might have gotten a lot better over the years. But the ones I did play, I didn't really care for. I think I played two, maybe. It was either two or one. I think at one point I played five because I played it through, uh... Um, like a Gaiden 7. Or, like a Dragon 7, sorry. Because that's... That's available in the arcade on that game. Which is still a cool thing that they do, I think. But it's also the arcade version of the game, and I think it's also the non-updated version of the game, too. So there's, like, not a lot of characters, or not as many as there were when they got updated. Speaking of arcade versions, I don't like the fact that the Marvel collection for, like, MVC and, you know, Marvel's Capcom and all that, 
I don't like the fact that NBC2 is stuck in the arcade version because then you have to like, you know, you have to fight somebody and the winner moves on to like the next stage. And if I'm playing locally, which I usually do, I don't like having, you know, the only way to select the stage is for one person to win and go through the arcade and then the next person to just enter in, you know, putting in a token or what have you. I... I don't mind arcade mode stuff, right? I just think that if you're making a game like that, it would have been nice to see it have local. But I feel like, maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like local multiplayer... Well, okay, I think I'm a little bit wrong because it's not completely gone. Because we thought it was going to die way earlier than that, but it technically didn't. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if we're going to get to the point where just local play is just going to fucking deteriorate even further than this. I don't know why Capcom allows these fucking games to be that way. I don't get it. Why it has to be arcade versions, I don't know. There could be some... It's probably some technical thing where it's like, oh yeah, it works better if it was arcade version rather than, you know, PS2 version or whatever, or Dreamcast. But I just... I don't care about the... Personally for me, I don't care about the technicalities of a game working. Like, I don't... I'm the type that, like, I understand that there's... That one stage in MVC3 that's always played on, the Tron Bond stage, because of the fact that it has, like, no lag or whatever. But for me, like, I don't care about that intricacy myself. I like esports. I do. But I just don't think I personally care too much to where I want it to affect my actual, you know, local play. I like to play with my friends. We like to play fighting games, and I want to be able to do that. And that's what also pissed me off about when Platinum released uh, the Team T, their Team T game, and it was online multiplayer only, and that sucked. Which, that leads me into the other part of the topic for NPC 2 is I think that's the reason why we probably just got stuck with it being um, the arcade version, technically, because, well, one, that's how, you know, people back then would play it, of course, but at the same time, you know, which is fine and dandy. I wish we could just have both arcade version and, you know, console. But, I don't know. Maybe it could be a port issue, too. They don't have the code or whatever. Anyway. Um, yeah, like, that's probably why, like, online multiplayer is such a big thing, just in general. You know, it's been a big thing for so long, too, that it wouldn't surprise me if that was the idea. Also, that is such a fucking good shall you move right there. The fact that, like, you can just have your back turned to an opponent and still be able to follow up with something is really nice. Because, funny enough, I, I've i been going through Sparking Zero and playing a little bit of that, which is fun, by the way. It's pretty good. I like it. Of course, I also like BT3, by the way. If anybody's wondering, yes, I have played, you know, BT3 and 2. Not 1, just 2 and 3. That's about it. More of a fan of 3. Just saying. God damn it. I just need to get past Ancient Ogre and I'm pretty much good. Because True Ogre is kind of just, well, he's just kind of that. I need to... I keep thinking that's like an infinite when he does like that kick thing. Well, anyway, um... The thing is, like, you know, local multiplayer being such a big... Big thing makes sense to why they would probably just stick it with with that and not up or not give us the ability to play local um, effectively local like you know what I mean for Marvel and, and the same thing kind of happened I feel like with well there's a diff there's, there's a reason why it happened with sparking with sparking zero from what I've heard is if they were to give us a split screen they'd pretty much have to be running two games at once for that to work and I'm of the belief that I'm perfectly okay with a game because, like, I'm pretty sure they probably didn't want to run two games at once because, most likely, you know, graphic fidelity, frame rate, and all that stuff would have probably eaten shit. Um, which makes sense, I guess. Although, I still feel like there's a little bit of hint of bullshit, but I don't know. I'm not a game dev. I don't know. I just want my games to be split-screen and have more than one fucking map, please. Um, but, yeah, so... It's weird that they did that. Oh my, what is that grab? I can't tell. I can't tell if it's both. Is it like King, where it's just you just never know how to break it? <laughs> it? It feels like the case. Oh my god, dude. He just... 
Ugh. Thank God I don't have to pay money to play this game. Thank God for console versions, right? Can you imagine doing a Let's Play like at an arcade? That'd be weird. Just standing there like in front of an arcade machine talking to a video camera. I'm sure some people have done that, of course, but... Well, yeah, they have. I'm just saying, like, imagine just that's your Let's Play content. Oh, thank God. Got that power kick in. I forgot about that. Yeah, changing to two ogre now. So, anywho, uh, yeah, like, running two games at once, yeah, but I'm also of the belief that I feel personally that I would rather just have a game function fine enough. Like, I'm okay with not having a great looking game. Because, for example, Hunter x Hunter is coming out, and people are like, yeah, that game doesn't look that good. And I saw, like, what the gameplay looked like, and I'm like, I'm like, no, nah, man, like, that game looks good. Like, it looks like it's going to be a fun game to play. I should move my mic back a little bit. I personally think it's going to be a good game to play. I want my game to feel fun. I don't care how it looks graphically as long as it just plays well. Because in my opinion, this might shock some people. I'm not a huge fan of MVC3. And I think that game looks... Personally, I don't really care for the style. And not only do I not care for the style, I also, well, personally, like playing the game too much. <laughs> I never really got that good at it, to be fair, so it's kind of my fault. It's not a bad game, per se. I, I'm just not good at it. And I have other games I, you know, play instead. But anyway, that's Shaiyu's campaign. I'll stop yapping for now. We'll find something else to yap about probably in the next episode, which I'll probably actually end up doing now, to be fair. So, anyway, that was Shaoyu. Thanks for watching, and as always, take care, everybody.